Hello and welcome to the ShowRatings.tv Pilot Roundtable, a Southgate Media Group podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Tremblay, and I'm the editor-in-chief of the television website ShowRatings.tv, where you can read reviews of your favorite TV shows and rate and discuss them yourself. Today is the fourth episode of our 2014-2015 Network Pilot Preview, focusing on NBC. Here to talk about the upcoming NBC pilots, a longtime friend, the social media director, and my fellow editor at ShowRatings.tv. She turns the music on and gets the party started. Blair Knight Graves, welcome to the podcast. Hello, hello. Oh, so- wow, you you kind of botched that quote a little bit. Did I? What's the quote? I turn the music on, I bring the fun in. You bring the fun in? I bring the fun in. It's a Buffy quote. Well, I want you to get the party started. <laughs> well, I can also get the party started. Well, I can... Who is that? Pink? I can be pink. Yeah, I thought it was a pink quote. <laughs> okay. I thought that was wow. I thought it, you were quoting every pink song. <laughs> wow. Well, it is a song, but it's from the musical episode of Buffy called Once More with Feeling. Oh, which you've made me watch like four times in my life and I'm still not even close to knowing a single scene from. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So, we are not here to talk about Buffy much to your chagrin. No. <laughs> we are here to talk about NBC. Yes. And, I, yeah. <laughs> I do want to make a note really quickly, uh, right before we get into this. Uh, I write uh, the term Parks and Rec on my computer so frequently that my Facebook ads right now, I have, I've had three of them in the last week, are from the Parks and Recreation <laughs> Departments of Chicago. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Asking me to donate to some kind of cause, and I think that that is just the best thing ever. <laughs> you're, a, you're a huge fan of parks in general. In general. The very concept parks and, of parks. <laughs> parks and Recreation Departments are my favorite department. Of course. Naturally. <laughs> That's great. That's really living yeah. the dream. Yeah, it really is. Um, so you and I are uh, are qualified to talk about NBC because we host a podcast devoted to an NBC show uh, right here it's on the true. Southgate Media Group uh, podcast network uh, called Monroe's <laughs> Comfy Sweater devoted to Grimm. Yes, yes. Uh, and if you haven't checked it out and you like Grimm, then you should check it out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And if you don't yeah. like Grimm, check it out anyway. Maybe, maybe you'll like us. <laughs> true. We're very funny. <laughs> we are. We, at, least, at least to ourselves. Right, that's right. As you're pe- punny. Uh, well, yeah, as, you're punny. Yeah. Well, people always tell us that we laugh at our own jokes too much. So yeah. get ready for 45 minutes of that. <laughs> hey! Um, uh, but first... Just the state of NBC right now, because it, it's sort of been the uh, the punchline of Netflix yeah. for a while now. But it actually finished this current season in first place in the coveted eighteen to forty nine demo. Um, yeah, yeah. All all for reasons that I don't participate in. Yeah, <laughs> um, you and I are longtime NBC vets. I would uh, yes. we've we've talked about how we think it is the premium version of the network television. Right. Um, and I, I'm not, I mean, I'm happy to hear that they finished first again, didn't participate in any of no. those shows that made it successful. I mean, let's be honest. It's really, it's football. <laughs> not me. The voice. Nope. Totally me. And the blacklist. <laughs> nope. Not me either. Uh, n- but neither me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but I will say everybody, uh, Kyle writes some amazing, the voice oh. predictions. He treats it like a sports league. So I check do. The, Check those out. That's really, really very. I take my voice more seriously than I take my football. Wow. Um, Pretty serious. Not not that serious. (laughs) I'm kind of taking football less seriously as as I get older. (laughs) But uh, anyway, so NBC is actually coming off uh, what could be considered a successful season for the first time in forever. Yeah. But uh, (laughs) but there is still plenty of room to grow, as evidenced by the network ordering a whopping 14 pilots for this season. Holy crap. Yeah, but only six (laughs) of them are starting the fall, and a lot of them are of the sort of limited run miniseries variety, which is interesting. Yes. So we're going to be talking about all of them. Uh, <laughs> are you ready, Blair? I'm very excited. Okay. Well, we're, we're going to be judging these uh, on our patented scale of will watch, might watch, and avoiding like the plague. <laughs> so let's get started with our first right. pilot, uh, which is Marry Me. It's, yes. it's from the creator of Happy Endings. And Mm -hmm. described by the NBC website as a fresh new romantic comedy about the funny and often bumpy road between I will and I do. Mm -hmm. And it stars Ken Marino and Casey Wilson. Uh, What what do you think, Flair? Well, 
I, okay. Mm -hmm. Big, big, sorry. Gathering your thoughts. Big, yes. Big, big fan of Ken Marino. Yes. Ken Marino uh, was in Party Down, uh, if anybody Oops. watched that on Stars, which was one of my favorite comedies of all time. Ooh, so he, he I, I want to watch because I love him. Yes. That being said, I understand that Happy Endings was like a great cult TV show and loves, lots of people I respect loved it, but it never appealed to me yeah. and neither did this trailer. <laughs> yes, and I am basically in the same boat. Um, a lot of people who I like a lot loved Happy Endings and I tried to get into it and failed. And yeah. this is, if you look at the, um, the behind the scenes people, everyone is from Happy Endings. This is a Happy Endings show. And it stars Casey Wilson, who obviously was in Happy Endings. And so this is probably going to be, have a very similar uh, comic sensibility to that. Um, I didn't laugh at the trailer. Nope. I don't understand how this premise of two people who are destined for each other but can't get married for a variety of like circumstantial reasons. I, I don't understand how that's going to sustain itself for more than one episode. <laughs> I don't, nope. <laughs> I don't, I mean, are they going to have to come up with like contrivances uh, to, to stop them? Um, it feels like this is going to go the way that happy endings did, which is that it started with a high concept premise. And then when it got good, it, it realized that um, maybe to just untether itself from that and just be a bunch of people hanging out. Yeah. And so that's probably where this is headed, which is a good place, but it, it might take it a little while to get there. <laughs> I'll say that the trailer suffered from the same thing that literally every TV trailer I've seen coming out for next season is suffering from, especially the NBC ones, yeah. which is that you get the the entire pilot in a four-minute breakdown. And I, as a viewer, of course, am attracted to trailers that tell me what the show is going to be about, but I feel like they kind of gave away literally everything in the Marry Me trailer. Literally, I can't think of a single thing that they're going to have yeah. <laughs> happen in the show that wasn't in the trailer. And yeah, it, as you said, like high concept that can't really be played for a really long time. Um, it, it can only deliver so much material before it, it's just going to be repeating itself at nauseum. Yeah, and I like the big scene in the trailer was the um, sort of premise of the show, which is that... Um, he the the man, Ken Marino is going to propose to Casey Wilson, but she's mad at him that he hasn't proposed already and doesn't <laughs> doesn't realize that he's about to propose. And right. he's arranged like a surprise party to congratulate them, and but she uh, like summarily insults everyone at the party without realizing they're there. <laughs> um, that's uncomfortable to me. <laughs> like, <Yes. laughs> like as a fan of Parks and Rec, as we've established, that's like that's even sort of more uncomfortable than a lot of what, like, The Office was. That's like, oh, it just makes me feel a little queasy, and I understand it's a comic situation and it's played for last and all that, but that, I, that that's not necessarily how I like my comedy. And yeah. so um, this trailer didn't really appeal to me at all. Well, yeah, and I mean, sorry to go back to the Parks and Rec thing, but the Parks and Rec, uh, one of the jokes that, one of the mo longest standing jokes on the show is them making fun of the character Gary, Jerry, Larry. Yeah. Uh, the the character whose name is constantly changing, yes. um, and it felt like that kind of mean comedy, and that's not the kind. Yeah, that's not the kind of. I, I don't like comedy that's at the expense of my characters. So I, I, I yeah, the, the the trailer didn't really. It just looked like they just keep getting themselves into bad situations, and yeah. it just like he loses his job. Yes. <laughs> and she, and she she calls his mom names. Right. And it's just like, oh, <laughs> and, wow, that seems really painful. <laughs> yes. And as we should note, most comedies are pretty bad when they start. Yes. Most comedies start poorly, including Parks and including mo yes. including The Office. And so really it's it's about what it'll be seven, eight episodes from now. Right. And so maybe they'll detach themselves from that premise and it'll just be a bunch of funny people being funny. And that's probably right. where we want this to head. But um, based on what you've seen, Blair, will watch, might watch, or avoiding like the plague. I am surprisingly going to be might watch because I love Ken Marino and I just I, I would like to see him in something else and I do wish him success. Yes, I'm going might watch as well. I um, it's a talented cast. It if it survives the initial ratings period and looks like it's going to stay on for a while and and I hear reports that it's getting better then that might be a show that I jump on yeah. so yeah Definitely. all right we're moving on to our second right. pilot premiering in the fall this one is called the mysteries of Laura yes. and it stars Deborah Messing 
who's an NBC vet. NBC vet Deborah Messing, uh, and described by the website as an action-packed but lighthearted cop show with a twist based on the popular Spanish series about one woman's quest to have it all. <laughs> Blair, what are you thinking on this one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't like the pilot. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't even... I haven't seen the pilot. Yes. I promise, I have I, not seen I've, it. I've <laughs> made that mistake like nine <laughs> yes. times so far, so don't worry. <laughs> Uh, I, I did not like the trailer at all. Yeah. Um, I love Deborah Messing and I think she did a great job as, uh, Grace in Willing Grace. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I have not seen her pull off another role ever and, <laughs> that I liked. <laughs> yeah. And th that was like 20 years ago, Will and Grace or, or, or 15 years ago. Like that was 10 to 15, yeah. yeah, 15 years ago. It's been a while for Deborah Messing. Yeah, and yes. this feels this trailer felt so much like a star vehicle for someone who yes. arguably in 2014 isn't that big of a star. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like there were so many scenes where it's like, look, guys, Deborah Messing is hot. Right. It's, it's like I'm I'm sorry, like this isn't Will and Grace. Like she's a, she's a good looking woman, good for her, right. but this isn't like the you know up and coming movie star. This is. I, I don't – I guess what I'm saying is Deborah Messing's present gives nothing to me. Like I, right. I don't I don't give the show any slack because of that. And when, you, when it doesn't get that kind of extra bonus, you're just left with what looks like a pretty dumb routine procedural cop show. <laughs> right. It's, just, it's, it's set up as a dramedy. Um, yeah. And it's an hour-long dramedy. Ugh. And it's a cop drama dramedy. And it's also a family dramedy. It's like all of these things that don't feel like they should fit together and it doesn't have the best lead. And I, I don't really care at all about the supporting cast whatsoever. Yeah. Except Janita Gavankar. I will say, Janita Gavankar, who was Luna in True Blood, Ooh. which is who I, you may remember was the, shape, the other shapeshifter mm. in True Blood. I don't know if I remember the first shapeshifter. <laughs> Sam. Uh, <laughs> so I do love Janita Gavankar. But other than that, it just it doesn't... It doesn't wow me, and I, I it, as you said, feels like a, a starlet, a vehicle for a star that isn't really a star, and she doesn't seem to be pulling off anything that happens in the trailer whatsoever. I, I do not like dramedies with misplaced stories and to yeah. make it, she's a mom and she's a cop. It just does yeah. not. Well, and that isn't that compelling to me because I, I, when I saw Lighthearted, I felt pretty good because I do like lighthearted, lighthearted police procedurals. Um, right. I think if you're going to do a lighthearted one, you kind of have to take a page out of the castle playbook and make it about a relationship. And yeah. this is about a family and basically a woman, and, and, and I think her husband is there too, in, in there somewhere. Her, ex, her, her ex-husband, husband. yes, right. And, yep. and raising children. And that to me isn't as compelling. Like, I think if you give people something to ship, they might uh, latch onto it. But it, and for our listeners, ship means oh, something. It's a verb for making a relationship. I feel like our care. listeners have to know. If I know that, I feel like our listeners have to know that. Because I'm behind the curve on all these things. I just need to say it just in case. Right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a line in this pile, er, in this trailer, there I go, um, that I just wanted to point out um, if you're on the fence of whether to watch the trailer for yourself, uh, where I believe, yeah, it is Deborah Messing says, tell someone uh, sort of angrily, this is parenting, not Pilates. And I right. thought, oh, gosh. <laughs> so, so that's what we're dealing with here. <laughs> Yes, exactly, exactly. So, Blair, on our rating scale, uh, will watch, might watch, or avoid like the plague. It's a show that's appealing to the middle of the country, so um, avoiding like the plague. <laughs> I don't. I think that's giving it too much credit. I don't think this show is going to appeal to anyone, and I think it's gone after like a month. Um, sure. I'm avoiding it sure. like the plague, like I suspect everyone will. <laughs> I don't know who this show is for. I, it's no. yeah. All right, <laughs> next up <laughs> is Bad Judge. It is – now, I'm going to say the good part first. It's from executive producers Will Ferrell and Adam McKay. Which, yes. So it's interesting. Uh, <laughs> then, then the other part is comes a sexy new comedy about a judge who always plays by her own rulings. <laughs> Ugh. Well, it's one of two pilots coming out from Will Ferrell and uh, – Are they – Yeah, the other one is the Mr. Robinson show, which – That's right. There, isn't a tra there is not a trailer for it yet. But We'll be talking about yeah. it in a bit. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, this looks awful. <laughs> it, is, it stars Kate Walsh, I should say, from Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Um, 
she doesn't appeal to me at all. No. <laughs> uh, I'm sure she has fans from Grey's Anatomy. It, it, I've only yeah. seen her on screen for the three minutes of this trailer, and whoa boy, did I not like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, we just got done with Bad Teacher, right? Yeah. Bad no, Teacher just, just premiered and got canceled two weeks later. This is Bad Judge. Are we just going to have this string of shows about uh, naughty women in professional <laughs> roles? Like, is that what we're doing now? <laughs> It might be the new thing. What What are we doing? (laughs) Yeah, it's weird. Um, I I wanted. I didn't know when I wanted to bring this up, but like one of the things I like about what NBC is putting out next season is almost every single show has a female lead. Which for me, I that that's something that's really important to me as a woman uh, to see representation on television and to see women represented in, in various ways, but. To have so many shows coming out that are about professional women who are also super naughty. Yeah. Like, it's like a fetishization yes. of, oh. of a career rather than respecting, like, rather than making a comedy, not that I'd want it to be a comedy like uh, The Mysteries of Laura where she's got a family at home or whatever, but there's other ways yes. that you could make a comedy out of a judge rather than just being like, well, she likes, she oh, drinks yeah. wine for wine for breakfast <laughs> yeah. is one of her lines. Make no <laughs> mistake about it. This is exclusively for men. This is, this yeah. is a male fantasy. Like, like, Hey guys, what if the judge was hot? And what if she was having sex with the plaintiff backstage? You know, like, like, cause that's yeah. the scene in the trailer. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> I mean, it's, this is like, you know, this is just a purely male fantasy uh, about you know something that uh, is exists only in the male mind, and mm-hmm. I'm I'm sure they're going to pay lip service to empowering the bad judge herself and making her quote unquote respectable. But right. the premise is it, I, again we just saw this with Bad Teacher, and yeah. that show well, was it even, terrible. Yeah. It even has a little. Both of them have a little kid who teaches the bad professional <laughs> yep. how to act like a grown up. It's the same premise. <laughs> it's the exact same, same premise. I <laughs> see no hope at all for this show. It looks no. terrible. Um, no. it, Although I, yeah. I, I'm terrified that it will actually get like three seasons. It will first because of uh, what's her name, Kate Walsh. Uh, and Will Ferrell and Adam McKay. I mean, we, yeah. It, it, I don't know how involved they're going to be, but you know, I mean, that's that's going to bring some people to the show. And so I don't think it'll premiere badly. Um, but at the same time, I just, I can't see a show called bad judge being on TV for multiple seasons. Okay. <laughs> it just seems, <laughs> it seems like one of those shows you read the name and you're like, Oh, that's canceled. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's, it's TV history. All right. But yeah. not to mention that in her picture, she's wearing cowboy boots and yeah. a loosely fitting judges guard. Not great. Just, no, not, not good. Not good. Oh. Not good. <laughs> All right. Will watch, might watch, or avoiding like the plague. Boy didn't like the plague. Uh, I was going to say it with you. I was going to count down. This is getting <laughs> depressing. <laughs> All right. We're going to pick it up now, though, because here we go. It's time to get serious. It's, 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 it's time to, uh, to, 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 to bang the gavel and, uh, and introduce Constantine. Yes! Yes! Let's make this happen. Yes. All right. Described by NBC as based on the wildly popular comic book series Hellblazer from DC Comics, seasoned demon hunter and master of the occult John Constantine specializes in giving hell hell. Blair, <laughs> what do you think about Constantine? Oh, so exciting! Thank goodness. So exciting! Just what we going, needed it most. <laughs> it's going Friday nights paired next to Grimm, so oh. you know that Kyle and I are gonna love them. <laughs> we are watching. Excuse me. Excuse the pun. We are watching the hell out of Constantine. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's my applause right there. I appreciate your applause. And that is the end of the podcast. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in. No, we have to do Constantine justice because a uh, recent guest and our dear friend Sophia Porter is over the moon excited about the show <laughs> and almost kicked you off as a guest because she wanted to talk about Constantine so badly. I thought she was never going to leave. So, <laughs> so. So now it, it falls to us to honor yeah. her memory. Yeah, of oh, the, the fallen one. Yes. Well, she's not doing the podcast. I assume she's just sitting quietly in a dark room just waiting for us the, to talk about this show that she loves so much. Watching the trailer on yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's it. By the way, in case all of you are wondering, I'm going to be doing that this summer. I will be watching this trailer like 
a bazillion more times. This trailer is fantastic. Yes. This is a <laughs> great trailer. Oh my god. I would say the best trailer of the entire season any network. By far. By far. This is a By great far. trailer. It, it made me so excited for the show. The lead, whose name is Matt Ryan, I think. Uh, I don't yes. know him. Um, it seems great. And it seems to have just the right mix of um, like sort of lightheartedness and yes. a like compelling story and a central narrative. And oh boy, this looks good. Yeah. And, and I do, I want to say this for people who haven't listened to our Grim podcast before. This is not Kyle's cup of tea. <laughs> so if he's excited about a supernatural show, that means that there's something fantastic well, about it. I will say, they probably <laughs> haven't listened to our Grim podcast, but I suspect they've listened to a prior episode in, in all of which I have given that same disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> in, in all four episodes of this series i have announced that i am not a comic book fan because comic book shows are premiering on every network but this is the one that looks to me to have appeal to both comic book readers and non-comic book readers yeah. like this yeah. this is the one that looks like a real series that doesn't rely on you having familiarity with the source material or an affection for the source material because i've never heard of this comic book in my life well, and Hellblazer is, is, a, is a perfectly fine comic book, and it is a perfectly well-read comic book, but it's not your iconic Batman or Green Arrow or any of the S.H.I.E.L.D. characters. Like, this, this is a character who was previously played by Keanu Reeves, and I will say, not terribly played by Keanu Reeves. I, I think the internet disagrees with you on that. <laughs> Well, I liked the original Constantine film, so please don't judge my taste. Based well, on that. I, I but, yeah. <laughs> but in general, a very, very cool concept, a fantastic trailer. Definitely suggest that you check it out. It's about a guy who can see demons and he fights them. Yeah, that's, that seems to be about it. Off, which is really kind of perfectly paired with Grimm. Yes. <laughs> it's perfect. It, it, yes, it's the same premise. <laughs> It's the exact same premise, except one has like grim fairy tale creatures and one has scary, horrible demons. Yeah, and I'll go with scary, <laughs> horrible demons. Uh, this, uh, this could be a. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a huge hit, although I think it's got a good shot, but this could be, more importantly, a really good show. A, yeah. uh, in the same vein as Grimm and, and quite possibly better than Grimm. <laughs> So, yes. so we're both very excited. By the way, Constantine the movie uh, has a forty-six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. So good work there. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I've got good taste. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I do. I do want to make one comment. Yes, yes, which yes. I, I wonder if Sophia made the same comment. It is interesting that uh, a DC comic is not being a DC comic based TV show is not being aired on the CW, yeah. given that the CW has uh, now the Flash and also, of course, Arrow. Arrow, yes. Uh, I, will this occur in the same universe as the, those shows? I no, because that, right, yeah, no, no. This is a this this is it's not. This is a Marvel. Are, right. Where? Well, no. Even Marvel has comic books that do not exist within the Marvel okay. universe. They, yeah, they just are published by Marvel. Gotcha. So that's where Constantine kind of gets away with it. Um, but at the same time, it's just interesting that uh, that there would be a network. There would be multiple networks housing the same yeah. uh, publishing company. Well, and this seems. I'm so glad for that because this seems so much more suited for NBC than for the CW because yes. the CW loves to delve into the relationship stuff right. and uh, NBC, you know, as we've seen with Grimm, is able to sustain a more procedure, action procedural kind of show, which seems like what this will be. Well, and not to, to rag on CW at all, but NBC, when it chooses to tell supernatural stories, it tells very adult and grown-up supernatural yeah. stories. Grimm although, like, very, very campy, is a much more adult show than uh, than Supernatural. Um, yeah. Sorry, Supernatural. Yeah, not trying shots to fired. Not, I, you right, had, shots so, fired. You had Sophia on board until here, and now she's... <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine her in front of her computer in the dark room. <laughs> <laughs> gnashing of teeth. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, but, and then the same thing, like, Hannibal's not a Supernatural show, but... Even okay, so Hannibal and Dracula, like yeah. two quality of shows, totally, different. totally different, but appeal. Yes. I would think to a very similar audience. Yeah, they're, um, they're not they're not engaging in teen relationship drama, right? And that's sort of the trademark of the CW is like early twenties, late teens, having relationships with each other is right. you know is is even in the you know series like the Vampire Diaries, like that's the whole series, even though it's about vampires and and supernatural stuff. It's like. Yeah. But NBC, again, with Grimm and, and, and 
the other shows you mentioned, Dracula Hannibal, can manage to do shows that aren't directly tied to relationships, which I think is, for based on this trailer, a very good thing. Yes, um, absolutely. So, okay, so this is a formality, but uh, we'll watch, might watch, or avoid like the plague. We'll be watching so hardcore. Me too. I am, and this, this is the only pilot so far that I can safely say I'm going to watch at least like eight episodes. E- even the ones I'm excited about, it's still like three to five to make sure it's good. But this right. one, I'm, I'm pretty much in. And it helps that it's airing with Grimm. So. Right. Oh, and I do want to mention this is from executive producers from, uh, from the Dark Knight series. Um, and then also a director from Game of Thrones. Yes. So... You know, Lots. we're definitely well. We're definitely in the hands of craftsmen. Yes, <laughs> yes, right. It's not. It, sometimes you you read those credits from the executive producers, and it's a red flag. And yes. this is the opposite. It's good to see that kind of um, that kind of resume on the people who are making this show. Exactly. All right. So uh, next up, we got two more in the fall, and then a whole bunch of mid-season premieres to talk about. Um, our next fall <laughs> pilot is A to Z. <laughs> it is described as the A to Z story, duh, of Andrew <laughs> and Zelda. Uh. <laughs> a, okay. a pair that almost wasn't, and all that happened from the day they met. Uh, is it a true love forever, or just a do- detour in destiny? Follow the ins and outs of Andrew and Zelda. <laughs> from, <laughs> and it's from executive producer Rashida Jones. What up, Anne? Hey, hey Anne, Anne Perkins. Anne Perkins. It stars... Um, Michael Ginsburg from Mad Men, Ben Feldman, which is a little bit exciting for me to see, to see uh, a Mad Men vet get some work. But um, Blair, what do you think about this trailer? Not interested at all. No. Nope. <laughs> no. Nope, nope. nope. Sorry, nope. Ginsburg. <laughs> uh, it's it's a thirty. It's a it's a half hour. It's a half hour comedy. Yes. That looks much more well suited to be a drama. Um, well, I, I would I, thought, I would watch this as a drama. I thought you said this trailer felt like a half hour comedy because the trailer <laughs> lasted like twenty five minutes to me. <laughs> it was only three minutes long, but I mean, I, I listen. I I like Michael Ginsburg, Ben Feldman, whatever his real name is. <laughs> but, ben Feldman. But um, this feels like it's trying to be How I Met Your Mother, yep. where you start with like this is how it happened, and then you backtrack and and hopefully get nine seasons out of it and i didn't watch how i met your mother and i have no interest in watching this show yeah no Um, not at all even with a narrator like katie seagal who i love um it's just not it okay so for those of you who haven't watched the trailer uh it's just two people who think they've met each other before and then like for a minute of the trailer they keep talking about I think I've met you are you yeah. sure no I really think that I have yep. and then <laughs> then it turns out at the end of the trailer that they had met each other in the past oh boy that, yeah that was I mean I figured that was the whole pilot yeah what's episode two gonna be <laughs> I, I have no sense of what this series is going to be on a week-to-week basis, and I have no interest in finding out. No. Um, no. So, no. Blair, uh, uh, will watch, might watch, avoid like the plague. Avoid like the plague. As am I. <laughs> NBC's real hit or miss this year. Yeah. <laughs> mostly miss. I feel like Constantine <laughs> might be an <laughs> abnormality. <laughs> um, NBC's sort of been straight misses for yeah. two years. Yeah, well, they got black. So. Hey, if they get one hit a year, I guess that's a good batting average in today's TV that's- landscape. That's true. If, that's if true. If Constantine is the blacklist of this year, NBC will be happy, even if everything else tanks. Constantine, unless it come, turns out to be like Dracula, which for those of you who don't know, Dracula was the abomination that NBC decided to show. Also talked about <laughs> in every podcast so far. <laughs> in, in every podcast, I've compared a show to Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Constantine... Hopefully not Dracula no, it, because I I couldn't do that to myself. It's again. too smart. It, it, even from yeah. the trailer, you can tell it's it's not. Yeah. It's it's not. <laughs> Constantine's not going to be running a business. <laughs> so all right. It's our, not going to be running a coolant business. No, is that what you're he's not going to be worried about the supply chain management of his company, of his <laughs> anachronistic company. <laughs> okay. Okay. So bad. So bad. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're moving on to the last pilot of the fall, which is State of Affairs. Yeah. From the writer-director of The Blacklist uh, comes a high-octane, edge-of-your-seat thriller that could change the way you see politics, the White House, and the world at large. And it stars Katherine Heigl. Yeah. Blair, what did you think? This is NBC's uh, solution to Scandal. 
Oh, really? <laughs> I thought it was NBC Solution to Homeland. Oh. This is Homeland. This is this is this is Homeland in a low rent neighborhood. <laughs> it's it's Homeland in a low rent neighborhood, but there's uh I, I really got I really got that kind of campy scandal feeling off of it. It tried to be serious, but I could see right through it. Oh, serious don't, don't, don't be confused. Scandal and Homelander are on the same wavelength in, ter- okay. in terms of like campy, stupid stuff happening. Ho- right. Homeland didn't start that way, but it, it, this is NBC's version of season three of Homeland. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, at first of all, I just, I noticed in this trailer, like there's like nine references to the book. Like, Catherine Heigl is like, let's, we got, um, is it in the book? Let's add it to the book. I'm like, what's the right. book? <laughs> I guess we'll have to tune in to see, Kyle. <laughs> I think they explained what it was, but I lost track. I'm already, uh, uh, State of Affairs is already losing me, and it's only been a three-minute pilot <laughs> a trailer. I, I will say, um, as somebody who does enjoy your a chick flick now and then. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm very familiar with Katherine Heigl's work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do not let this color your opinion of me as a TV or movie watcher. It already has. But, it's too late. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I'm excited to see her in a dramatic role. I don't know if she'll be able to pull off the material. And and, and I say, you know, dramatic lightly because as we established, it's this sort is, of a campy this thing. Is a very silly show. <laughs> yes, very, very silly. Uh, but I, kind of in the same way that you know, she could she could pull a keeper Sutherland, and she could actually yeah. do a good job with the role. She could be the female Jack Bauer. Yeah. You know, like I, I'm not saying she will be, but I'm just like having just and now. I'm saying this publicly yes. almost for the first time. The I'm just on the record. I have just started watching the original series of 24. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 13 years after the fact, because now I, my opinion is no longer, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> because I'm trying it out. Uh, Catherine Heigl could pull Kiefer Sutherland and totally shock us and actually do a really good job in this role. And I will go on the record as saying, I think Jack Bauer, the, the way that Kiefer Sutherland plays Jack Bauer is pretty cool. He's uh, he, he makes that show. I mean, it's, it's yeah, that yeah, performance, yeah. that commitment. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to throw shade at Catherine Heigl. I'm, I'm, I know a lot of people sort of hate her, but I am not one of them. I don't particularly love her. I'm not going to – her her presence is not going to make me tune into this show. Um, what what gets me about this show, and we're going to talk about this a lot in, in the CBS podcast, the, the, which is the last one in the series that we're doing, which is that it's it's the kind of show where the person at the center of it is never wrong. Yeah. And it's it's like every decision they make is justified and they sort of create these quote unquote moral dilemmas for them where it's where they always do the right thing and then they take flack for it and worry about having done the wrong thing but then it all works out in the end. And yeah. and that kind of show has absolutely no appeal to me. And that's yeah. the kind of show that Homeland became last season and it's the kind of show that CBS does all the time. And it's the kind of show that I have no interest in. And this trailer actually made me actively dislike this show. Um, wow. I, this, is the, this is the show – there's a lot of shows so far that I have just said, oh, this is stupid and I'm never going to watch it. This show I actually dislike. I, I think um, it's pretentious and mm-hmm. f- th- th- it's fake smart. It, you know, it's, yes, it's trying absolutely. to pass itself off as a little more serious than – it it indicates, and again, this is all based on a three minute trailer. But that those three minutes made me dislike this show, and yeah. so I will absolutely be avoiding this like the plague. <laughs> I, this is this well, is my most gleeful avoid yet. <laughs> <laughs> I I will say that the thing that the reason that I never wanted to tune into Twenty Four, and one of the reasons that I am not terribly interested in Homeland, is I don't like the demonization of Muslim cultures and uh, the Middle East. I think that I don't like propaganda television. Um, And I think that it is 2014 people and we should be past that. And why are we starting a new show that's about that? Uh, And on one of my favorite networks, the one saving grace this show does have is the, I don't know if she's, uh, supporting lead or whatever, but Alfred Woodard is in it. And I really do like her. Uh, yes. And I really do wish her success, but I I do not I do as I said I do not like demonization of the Middle East, and so for that reason I'm going to be avoiding this uh, this show like the plague. Good. Well, I'm glad I'm glad we both settled on that because <laughs> you would like this one. I was going to argue. 
right. No, All right. You and I usually have kind of in sync with this kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm almost militantly opposed to state of affairs. I, I didn't realize that I disliked it this much until I started talking about it and remembering that stupid trailer. <laughs> yeah, I don't, Although, yeah. I, I do want to say, as I said before, though, I am excited that NBC is putting out so many pilots with female leads. Yeah. Um, and I like the tag of the show, which is all the president's men are nothing compared to her. Ugh. Like I, yeah, Ugh. I know. It's, I know. I know. It's dread. <laughs> it's dread. It's dreadful. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm excited to see a political military thriller led by a woman. So I will say that I'm, by two women, two women. Yeah. I, so. I'm all for girl power shows. Uh, oh, Kyle. As I will, as I will uh, <laughs> call them as if I'm a character on a CVS pilot. <laughs> um, but I'm not. That's not. To, that to me is not what is unappealing about this show. Oh, it's, I completely it's agree. The, it's yeah. It's, I I really have a problem with pretentious television that is dumb. And yeah. this pilot, something about this pilot strikes me as pretentious, and that it's not quite aware of how campy it is. Yes. And that's that's the problem I have. Um, all right, so we'll move on from that, um, <laughs> and we'll we're gonna zip through these. This is gonna be a lightning round. Lightning round. Although okay. if we, we there's no timer or anything, we'll probably just spend a while talking about that. But, <laughs> all right, these are the remaining, I, I believe, eight pilots um, <laughs> that <A lot. laughs> we have not seen a trailer for, and that will be premiering sometime during the mid season. So we're just going by the uh, the description on the site and the cast and what we know about the people behind the scenes. Are you ready, Blair? I'm ready. All right. First one, Allegiance. <laughs> uh, described uh, by the NBC website as a young idealistic CIA analyst specializing in Russian affairs learns a shocking secret and his close-knit affluent family is about to be split apart when it's revealed that his parents are covert Russian spies deactivated <laughs> decades ago. That's how NBC, NBC describes it. I describe it as low-rent the Americans. I was just going to say, this is NBC's answer yeah, to the Americans. They're doing Homeland and the Americans. Great. <laughs> Fantastic, NBC. Great job. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, why? Why? <laughs> the Americans is quite possibly the best show on television this season. Why would you do a cheap version that will never in a million years be 70% as good as it? Well, you know what? It might, you know, be kind of like CBS where they put out a low-rent version of something. And it's more popular. It's, it's more popular <laughs> yeah. and it succeeds because it's on a major network instead of being on FX. Because the Americans also doesn't have a very big audience. So yes. this, is, <laughs> this feels like such a low percentage play for NBC. And also considering that I think it was CBS who did The Assets, which is also an, yeah. an 80s spy series that was the lowest rated of all time, a primetime series to ever air on any network. This feels like a bomb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does. I agree. Not interested. However, I will say Scott Cohen is in it. He, is. And he plays uh, Scott Scott Cohen, for me, nobody else will care about this, was uh, the werewolf in The Tenth Kingdom, which is oh, a boy. TV show that I grew up on. Oh, so, How did we get to The Tenth Kingdom? Yeah, well, just because I, I always find a reason to plug The Tenth Kingdom. Yep. <laughs> Angel and The Tenth Kingdom. There's podcast checklist. <laughs> But I, I will say, though, also, uh, the, the executive producer slash writer-director uh, is George Nolfi, who did The Adjustment Bureau, which was a movie that was really campy yeah. and fun. Like, yes. it, was a, it was a fun movie that I enjoyed greatly. And if, if this, if the, is it the Allegiance or just Allegiance? Allegiance. If, Allegiance <laughs> if Allegiance were able to pull off that sort of campiness then it m might be worth checking out but otherwise i'm gonna go with avoid like the play well, I, I as as much as i make fun of it um i haven't seen a trailer and so right. this could go in a lot of different ways and so i'm going to leave it open with a might watch just because okay. i want to see a trailer um and i want to you know may maybe it's going to be different from the americans in tone mm -hmm. and uh and and sort of make its uh make its way that that way so you know, I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical, but I'm not going to rule it out yet. All right. All right. Next <laughs> is Aquarius, which is David Duchovny's return to network television. Well, hey. Yeah, your, <laughs> for your X-Files, another <laughs> item on your checklist, the X-Files crossed <laughs> off, uh, described as a show that will explore the cat and mouse game between a young Charles Manson and the police, which will go on for several seasons, ultimately <laughs> ending with the infamous Tate LaBianca murders. It seems like a fun romp. Blair, <laughs> what are you thinking? I feel like the show should be paired with Hannibal. Yeah. 
Like, I, I feel like this is ABC really trying to it's dig its heels. Or, sorry, NBC. Yeah. Sorry, wow. NBC. This is NBC really trying to deal, dig its heels into the sand. Is that what the, what's the phrase? It, I don't know. It can be. It is now. <laughs> sure, yeah. On a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I love Hannibal. Yes. I, it, I think, I, I personally think it's like, the best show on television right now. I, I, are you saying that because of the finale, which was bonkers, crazy, amazing? <laughs> Not just because of the finale, <laughs> okay. because as a as a, as a film ge- as a film geek who went to film school, like it is masterfully crafted, and I've never seen anything like it. And I just want to constantly be watching it, although that would damage my soul irreparably. <laughs> yeah. well, here's, <laughs> here's the problem, because that is something specific to the people behind the cameras and yes. Brian Fuller, and yes. we don't know. Well, who's going to be doing Aquarius, right? Well, what we know about Aquarius is it's made by the person who made In Plain Sight and Prison Break. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> oh, I just I just dropped my water when you said that. I was holding a water bottle and I dropped it because we are in trouble. <laughs> yes. if, okay. Well, now because I had actually written in my notes uh, Hannibal, like Hannibal question mark because <laughs> this feels like a Hannibal type series, right up to the like where Hannibal is trying to catch up with the narrative in the books and the movies, like saying that saying that a few seasons down the road they're going to get to the uh, famous murders committed by Charles Manson. Um, seems like a very Hannibal move, right? But. Like a solid half of Hannibal is its visual style and the way it uses music and the way it, you know, frames scenes and all that stuff. And if that's not going to be this, that like if Hannibal didn't have that, it would still be an interesting show. But I, I don't know what it would really hang its hat on. And so, David Duchovny is going to be playing the police sergeant who's yes. chasing Charles Manson. He is not playing Charles Manson. Uh, and <laughs> although that would have yeah. been interesting. That would have been very interesting. And what works for Hannibal also is the chemistry between Hugh Dancy and Mads Mikkelsen as um, as Will Graham and Hannibal Lecter. So if they do get an amazing Charles Manson, if they score somebody who is just going to knock that out of the park, In Plain Sight had a, a, an okay, it had an okay premise that sometimes was executed really well, but most of the time wasn't. Yeah. Um, but- so okay. they could do it right with the right performances, but, with the right leads, I think. With this premise, how often can they get whoever plays Charles Manson with David Duchovny in a room? Because it's a, it's a, you know, a, a, a someone who is, who is suspected of murder, obviously, and a police sergeant. Like, how often are those two going to come together? He's not, he's not going to be his therapist like in Hannibal. Oh. You know, like, like I, I'm just wondering, because can you have a premise where? The idea is is a cop trying to catch a bad guy, but you know going in that the bad guy is going to be like active for at least four seasons and commit some of the most heinous crimes in American history. Like, yeah. there's no mystery to that. We know what's going to happen. Right. And it, so, is it going to be like Bates Motel, where we where we kind of know the ending in advance and we're just seeing how it gets there? Um, well, in Hannibal, you know the ending. Yeah, but Hannibal also uh, graphs a different story on that like Hannibal Hannibal is often presented not as the big bad of that series I mean obviously in the last few episodes he was but it introduces other characters are there going to be other big bads in this series is is this going to be like a case where Charles Manson has some episodes where he only appears for like two minutes and it's a different unrelated case more like a procedural show like well this could also suffer from the same problem that the following suffers from because wasn't didn't Charles Manson also like have a cult of people that he made kill people yes like so, oh uh, we we could oh be going boy. into the following oh, territory. We started oh, yeah. with Hannibal comparisons, and we moved down to the following. We are we are headed in the wrong direction on we Aquarius. Are, yeah, we are definitely headed in the wrong yeah. direction. So there's there's a lot of wiggle room in here, and it's going to depend a lot on the casting, and it's going to depend a lot on the stories that it's trying to tell. If it's trying to tell the following esque stories with a with only David Duchovny to carry it, it's not it's like. It's not going to work, but you know, if they get a Mads Mikkelsen to play Charles Manson, and if they they explore the territory that was, you know, the late '60s when a lot of terrible crimes were happening in general, yeah. 
then, you know, it might have a fighting chance. So I, I'm going to go in the middle yeah. on this one. Uh, but because I love David Duchovny, yes. like I can sing the entire song of David Duchovny, Why Don't You Love Me? I won't, but I can. Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you should be bragging about this. Um, <laughs> I, I bragged about a lot of things that should be. Yeah, this is, this, this, this is, is going to be problematic for you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm going to go with Might Watch as well. Again, we haven't seen the, the trailer and yeah. we did just talk about it for like 10 minutes. So th- that's saying <laughs> something like this is yeah. this is going to be interesting. If nothing else, yeah. it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a limited run series. They're not going to do like 24 of them. Right. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how it turns out. Um, next up is Emerald City, oh boy. which is described... <laughs> I'm sorry. I've I've had a couple where I couldn't get through the description without breaking up in laughter. I'm gonna try to make it through one sentence on this one, which is a dark and epic reimagining of the Oz series. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Wizard of Oz, but quote dark and epic. <laughs> and uh, the it, it, it is further described as a modern and dark reimagining of the Wizard of Oz in the vein of Game of Thrones. <laughs> so it's Wizard of Oz of Thrones. Perfect. Great. It's only ten episodes. <laughs> okay. My question is, who wants this? Who who was like who was like you know what would be great about Wizard of Oz if it was Game of Thrones? <laughs> I'll tell you exactly who wants who? this. Guess who is in the 18 to 49 demo now? All of the little girls like myself who saw Wicked when it first did its big run about a decade ago. So we're all about 25 now. And we all love shows like Supernatural and Game of Thrones and Doctor Who. So, and what a true blood. Like, we like all the gross violence that's also like all the. That's the fantastical stuff. But we also were all obsessed with Wicked about a decade ago. Yeah. That's exactly why this show is being made. I'm not going to watch it. But... Yeah, this, this doesn't seem... I mean, again, we haven't seen a trailer, but every single thing written about this makes it seem very serious. And, yes. and again, in, in the same tone of Game of Thrones, but the thing with Game of Thrones is there's this you know, contemporary series of books that's immensely popular. And so there was this massive built-in audience for Game of Thrones. Who in 2014 is tweeting about the Wizard of Oz? Like, where's who's you know? Again, like, I mean, I have I haven't heard anyone talk about Wicked now for for years and years. Like, I know it has a place in people's That's hearts. You're, you're not a 25 year old yeah, woman. Sure. My friends still talk about it all oh, the yeah. time. <laughs> but people aren't gonna be. It's it's like it's not based on. I mean. It, it's yeah, it's, it's the Wizard of Oz world. It's yeah. I don't well, know. Well, it's the Wizard of Oz world from the eyes of Dorothy rather from Elphaba. Oh. Uh, so it, it does. It comes from Dorothy. Yeah. Uh, I, but okay. So also, it comes from the executive producer of Terminator: The Sarah Connor Chronicles. And I know that I'm not going to be in the favorable opinion of this, yeah. but that show was not very good. Uh-huh. Um, and the only reason that it has a rabid fan base is because Summer Glau is in it, and because it's the Terminator series, which is a really fun series. Yeah. But that show tanked real hard it real did. fast it really did <laughs> it was good for a short while but then it just I, couldn't it spun out of control and just stopped being okay yes um and i you know if you try so hard to push this is dark this is gritty this is dark this is gritty but it's also the things you love about wicked i don't it just yeah. no i, I no. think mentioning game of thrones in the network description <laughs> is a huge red flag because yes. game of thrones is a singular entity and yes. I, if they're trying to capture that, I don't think it's going to go well. I don't. See, yeah, I don't think there's room I, for that. I think they would have been, and you probably you probably would disagree, but I think that they would have gotten away. They could have gotten away with saying, saying something like, like tr- season one of True Blood or oh, something sure. like that. Oh sure, uh, but that's a whole like, different thing. That's a fun, campy right. show, and this this doesn't nothing about this seems fun or campy. This seems <laughs> very very self serious. Well, the first season of True Blood is not. That camp. I, first... Listen, you, you you'll say that, but <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty campy <laughs> compared to the rest of the no, show. No, no, no. Relative to the rest of the show, of course not. It was it was it was buttoned up compared to the rest of the show. But in the grand spectrum of television, it's pretty campy. Yeah, that's true. Uh, um, but yeah, so I am I am even though I haven't seen the trailer for this, I well, I guess I have to give it a might watch. Just I mean, I feel like all I... these are going to be might watches just because yeah. we can't see a trailer. So. 
Yeah. Well, I, it, it's definitely a might watch, especially because of the, the Sarah Connor Chronicles, which started really, really, really strong. So I would like to watch the first couple of episodes of the show, unless the casting is like Zoe Deschanel, then I won't watch it at all. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, but you could say that about any show. <laughs> That's true. Um, if, if it starts Zoe Deschanel, I will not watch it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is, okay, our next show is actually the other one from Will, Will Ferrell and Adam McKay, and it's not the one we said it was earlier, because this is Mission Control. Oh, oops. And the description opens with Houston, we have a problem, which is oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> but uh, it's Kristen Ritter as a quote tough but brilliant aerospace engineer leading a team of NASA scientists at the cutting edge of space exploration, and it's a, basically a workplace comedy in the tone of Anchorman about the golden age of American ingenuity and in space travel. Blair, this is everything I'm not interested in. Yeah. Um, it's... This is this is if you smash. Uh, oh, this was really clever. Hold on, uh, if you smash. If you smash Mad Men with it's another show. Hold on, crap. Oh, with the Big Bang Theory. It's oh. like Mad Men with the Big Bang Theory and give a female lead, um, and then that's you get the show. See, um, this is everything <laughs> that I am interested in. <laughs> because I again I like Will Ferrell and Adam McKay. I like that they mention Anchorman. I think that's a good thing to mention because um, it, it, it told because they say it's in the tone of Anchorman. So it's right. okay. We know what we're talking about here. Um, it seems like it could be biting, which I like because yeah. um, you know, like Don't Trust the Bee was a, a biting show. It wasn't a particularly good show, but it wasn't it wasn't awful either. And uh, and I it seems like a decent comedic premise. Um, I feel like I could enjoy this show. Um, but, I yeah. don't like Anchorman. Yes, that's I do a not, fact. Yeah, this is a true fact about myself. I do not. I, I it is my least favorite Will Ferrell movie. I, I love the rest of the cast, but I just don't find it that funny. Yep. Uh, so, and uh, what's her name? Uh, Kristen Ritter doesn't really do anything for me. Sure. Um, so yeah, I I've said my piece. Yeah, it, we've, uh, we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up is Mr. Robinson. Hey now. Yeah, as lead singer and keyboardist of a rock band, uh, Craig Robinson knows a thing or two about working the crowd, but his day job is where he really makes the grade. And <laughs> from executive producer Howard Klein comes the story of a teacher who's always getting schooled. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it is from Craig Robinson, veteran of The Office, all around awesome dude. Yeah. And Howard Klein is from both Parks and Rec and The Office um, as a behind-the-scenes guy. So I am psyched for this. Yes, me too. Yes, it's I will, good. I will watch anything that has Craig Robinson right? in it. I will watch anything. I repeat, anything that has Craig yeah, Robinson in it. Yeah, and it seems <laughs> upbeat. And yep. uh, and it's from, again, from someone who worked on Parks and The Office. And... Uh, I, I like the idea of Craig Robinson being a teacher. I, I can imagine that in my head. Daryl from The Office teaching a class. <laughs> uh, like, everything about it, I, uh, I'm i excited for this one. It's it's like it's a little bit like the best way I would say with the rest of the description. It's kind of like School of Rock, but it's going to star Craig Robinson. Yeah. So, and yeah. yeah, School of Rock was a pretty solid pretty, comedy, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah so we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll see a trailer, but that one yeah. looks promising. Yes, very uh, promising. Uh, next up is Odyssey. Which, in, which invokes the movie Traffic in its description. Uh, in this traffic-like action drama, an international conspiracy explodes when three strangers' lives unexpectedly collide. A female soldier, a corporate lawyer, and a political activist. Uh, this looks like a whole lot of stuff happening. Just a lot of stuff happening in this one. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. really have a sense of what it is. It's, yeah, it's called Odyssey, so uh, I hope... Because it, it's basically like a woman gets targeted by the, her by the U.S. government. And she works in the U.S. government. Yes. Uh, and it, I hope I, I hope it's not like trying to invoke the Odyssey, I, like the story of the Odyssey. I, don't know. I, I I have no sense of this at all. This this is probably the one where I read the description and I just have no clue what this is going to be. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. But if you if you look at the cast, though, um, it's I mean. It's definitely gonna have. It's definitely going to have the same thing I talked about earlier, where it's going to be the uh, the anti anti Middle East propaganda type stuff. And I, you know, yeah. Although they could, yeah. it could. I mean, again, if if she's hunted by her own government, 
Right. It could be, uh, you know, we'll have to see the setup. It, it does have yeah. in the cast uh, Jim Trufrost, who is a veteran of The Wire. Always excited to hey. see Wire veterans <laughs> on shows. And that also leads me to believe that this is going to be a sort of cable style action yeah. drama where they're trying to be, you know, the Americans or something like that, you know, right. more than a network drama. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, not, not a lot, as not a lot to work off of. Yeah. And, uh, like if you look at the about section, like NBC.com slash Odyssey, um, it's a little confusing. It's kind of <laughs> hard to decipher. Yeah, it so, is. uh, good luck. It really is. <laughs> uh, you know, but again, I will say uh, female lead, which I am excited yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. So, sure. yeah. A military female lead, which I don't know that I've ever seen before. No. So, all yeah. All right. Well, we have two more to go. Okay. Uh, next is uh, next up is One Big Happy, which is um, – <laughs> I couldn't even make heads or tails of this summary, so I'm just going to give up my own summary, which is a straight guy trying to father a child with his gay female best friend meets a straight woman who he falls in love with and proposes to just as his best friend gets pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so that makes total sense. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all I really need to know about this is that um, it is from a writer, Liz Feldman, whose credit is Two Broke Girls. Oh, boy. So. But executive produced Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah. I am going to say that Ellen is not going to be involved in the day-to-day of this show. <laughs> um, I feel like if, if you star, if like you, part of your cast is the gay female best friend, it's good to get Ellen on board because you want that support. <laughs> right. But uh, if someone from Two Broke Girls is running this show, I'm instantly skeptical. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel exactly the same way. I think that this is NBC trying to come back with, uh, what was it, The New Normal? Yeah. Uh, it's just another take at The New Normal. The, the I, newer like, normal. The newer normal. Like, I, I, I appreciate and respect that NBC is trying to talk about family structures that are non-traditional. Yeah. Uh, and I applaud them for that. But uh, producing a comedy that is made by somebody who made Two Broke Girls, I don't think that anybody who writes Two Broke Girls is going to write a gay character <laughs> yeah. well, and, <laughs> in a, and a really likable light. <laughs> the, yes, and the Kelly Brook character is described as the manic pixie dream girl right to a T. Like, right. just the idea that, like, like in the, in the description, they're like, oh, she, um, the gay best friend doesn't like her because she walks around naked in the house. I'm like, oh, right. this, is, <laughs> this is where we're headed. You know, this is just going to be very traditional um, yeah, in terms and- of the the comedic perspective, I feel like. Yeah. Again, though, that's not having seen the trailer, but right. everything and about I- this makes me uninterested. <laughs> and they do also say that the straight woman and the straight man who get together, uh, the straight woman is British and they get married very quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know that the the central conflict of the show right away is going to be, did she marry him for well, the green card? Well, of course, well, of course <laughs> she's British because all Manic Pixie Dream Girls have a British accent. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's to a T. It's, it's, it's like right down the middle, like not even a, not even a little bit different than, yeah. you know, the sort of fake girl that, that's created. Um, yeah. So I'm not interested in that, but we'll, we'll see a, a trailer that comes out. Our final pilot is Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. <laughs> and uh, described as after 15 years of living in a cult, the unbreakable and wide-eyed Kimmy, played by Ellie Kemper from The Office, is rescued with three other women causing a national sensation. Uh, determined to have a romance and take advantage of everything life has to offer, Kimmy is using her optimistic spirit to finally start having all kinds of adventures in a world she never knew existed. Blair? So... So this is a little too soon for me after those women were found, was it in Ohio? Oh, you're, you're uh, calling too soon? <laughs> yeah, to make a comedy that semi, uh, semi comes from that background, uh, those, I mean, th- for me, any, like, it, mm. I, I love, okay, but let me say, I love Ellie Kemper. Yeah. I have. I was a big YouTube fan of her before she was gone. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were original, you're, you're Ellie Kemper hipster. I mean, I mean, I do have the glasses, I have the glasses for. It. Yes. Um, so I, and I think it looks, it's cute. It's, it's good, definitely going to be campy. And I, I kind of trust her comedic timing. I love everything that she's ever done. Yeah. So I'm definitely, definitely, definitely going to check it out. Um, but for me, a little too soon mm. from those Dude, women having been found. I think this is. I think that premise will be quickly forgotten. I think that that's just mm-hmm. a way to introduce a character as mm-hmm. not having experienced the world. 
And right. this is the important, the, the most important thing to know about this pilot is that everyone behind the scenes, including Tina Fey, who, who's the executive producer, is from 30 Rock. Yeah. This is this is going to be the next thirty rock. At least it's going to position itself as that. Yes. And so, um, I just I can see a series where Ellie Kemper, like a, like a very very cute and fun series where Ellie Kemper is um, wide eyed and happy about things. Yes. Like this it, this makes sense to me instantly. Like I understand yeah. the comedic perspective even before seeing a single second of it. Right. And so I'm, I'm uh, hopeful for this one. Well, and that's, that is a background that is written for Ellie Kemper. That is entirely where a lot of her comedic timing comes from, is being the wide-eyed, right. un, uninformed, adorable, exactly. childlike, but then sometimes crass woman. Yes. Uh, and I think that this is definitely 100% in her wheelhouse, and I am excited about it. Absolutely. So, yeah. all right. Let's recap. We we made it through all fourteen. Um, which pilot are you most excited about watching? Constantine. <laughs> and I'll second that. One, that's not even the interesting question. Which one are you the second most excited about watching? <laughs> oh, um. I know. I, I I feel like we have to ask that because Constantine is so obviously the best pilot okay. on NBC this year. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be a tie between Mr. Robinson and the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah. What about you? That's my exact answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, well, I've got nothing go. to add. That's it. Those are the three that I'm excited about. And, uh, yeah. Uh, which yeah. one are you least... Okay, if you had to bet all your possessions on one of these pilots being canceled after three episodes, what do you got? Um, well, I am not in any way, shape, or form going to vote on any of the shows that I haven't seen a trailer for. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm just going to vote on the six that have been filmed and yeah. it's a tie between a to z and bad judge <laughs> there's so many this is this is a much harder question because yeah. i feel like the mysteries of laura is right there <laughs> this, uh, and i to be honest I, marry me might be gone too like that could go yeah. quickly downhill <laughs> yeah i i okay so my uh, my reasoning for a to z is that I know I don't rec- you recognize that guy from Mad Men, but I don't think anybody from Mad Men is going to be tuning into A to Z. I don't think that his star power is going to propel that show. It's got Christina Moliati too. I don't know who that is. I, is, I, that, is that the main female? Yes, she <laughs> is. That Zelda. She <laughs> is. Hold on, she's the mother from How I Met Your Mother. Oh well, I gave up on How I Met Your Mother yes. before, but she did, people do um, know her kind of okay. a little bit from okay. the last two two years. Okay, well, so, okay, so oh, never sorry, mind. Her name is Kristen yeah. Mulyadi. <laughs> okay. I don't well, know she, <laughs> she, she might be able to carry it. I don't know. And then Bad Judge, I, I think that Bad Teacher was proof that uh, um, people don't want to, to see this fetishized professional woman. Uh, so that's, that's my thing. I think the Mysteries of Laura kind of fits into, it might be able to appeal to the castle crowd. Um, I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't have the Stan Akatic or the Nathan Fillion, but I think that there are enough people who like that kind of thing that it could probably survive a couple more episodes than Bad Teacher or A to Z. I mean, I'm, I'm, this is a tough call, and I can't fault any choice made here um, other than Constantine. <laughs> like, if you chose any of the shows that NBC is premiering other than Constantine, I'm not sure I could argue with you. <laughs> right. <laughs> but with A to Z, I'm thinking people do like the ship things. And yeah. it does have a How I Met Your Mother style premise and stars someone from How I Met Your Mother. Um, so I can see an audience for that. Um, I don't think it's going to last, but I could see that getting some episodes. Bad okay. Judge, uh, Will Ferrell and Adam McKay. Um, right. Kate Walsh from Grey's Anatomy. I feel like there's an audience there. I, who is the audience for the Mysteries of Laura? Because you said, the, you said the Castle fans, but Castle fans are there to watch the relationship between Nathan Fillion and Santa Caddick. And there is no central relationship on this show. There's no, you know, like you can tell from the start, there's no like will they or won't they romance. Um, it doesn't seem to have any kind of hook to it. <laughs> it, mm-hmm. it seems, and it doesn't star anyone who's going to bring eyeballs to the show. I feel like okay. The Mysteries of Laura is gone as quickly as um, Ironside was gone from NBC's schedule last yeah. year. A generic procedural with a ge- with uh, it, that's that show starred Blair Underwood, who has a higher profile in 2014 than Deborah Messing. That's true. But it just gave, <laughs> it, and that show wasn't even terrible. It was just completely forgettable. And I think that that's what the problem with the Mysteries of Lore is going to be. It's going to be utterly forgettable. Oh, and uh, I I can concede that to you. 
Well, we'll see. I mean, we're just making picks. It's, yeah. we're, not, we're not actually betting everything we own on this. <laughs> I, yes. I will say that state of affairs mm. with the Alfred Woodard and uh, Catherine Heigl powerhouse, I don't think it's – I think it'll survive. NBC has too much invested in that show. But yeah. that's one where I see it premiering well. And then if it's as dumb as I think it is, <laughs> it, it, it's going to go like the revolution way where it, it premieres big and then it just slowly loses, loses its audience. And by the end, it's like really low rated and canceled <laughs> without really much of a worry from the network. <laughs> yes, so, definitely. all right. Well, that wraps up NBC. Blair, thank yeah. you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Very excited for Constantine. Constantine, yes. <laughs> that, that wraps up the Constantine podcast. Um, how can people keep up with you? Oh, yes. Okay, so you can follow me on Twitter at, at Blair Loves TV, and Blair is spelled with an E, B-L-A-I-R-E. <laughs> I need to always plug that. It's not like the Blair Witch Project. Von Rose Comfrey Sweater listeners will appreciate that. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, you can also read my reviews on showratings.tv. I will be reviewing True Blood this season, yes. the final season of True Blood, uh, which I am both totally okay with and totally sad about. <laughs> <laughs> I've got mixed feels, which you'll be able to read in my reviews. So many feels. <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps up the fourth of our five scheduled pilot preview episodes. Check back again soon for our look at CBS. You can listen to all the episodes of the Show TV Pilot Roundtable Podcast at SouthgateMediaGroup.com. Follow me on Twitter at KyleLovesTV and Show Ratings at Show Ratings TV. And read myself and Blair's writing at www.showratings.tv. I've been Kyle Trembley. Thanks for listening. <laughs>